Welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at AI Summit New York and it's day two. Look who I have with me. It's uh, Kevin from Mabel. Uh, Kevin is the co-founder and CEO. Kevin, welcome to the Robert Show. Hey, thanks for having me. And uh, pleasure to be here. And glad you were also able to come from reInvent uh, out to New York this week. Yes, exactly. We missed each other at AWS and uh, we couldn't miss each other here. So I'm here, uh, obviously, at uh, Mabel's booth and I'm kind of excited to obviously learn more about yourself, what are you doing at Mabel, and uh, what's the story behind Mabel? Yeah, so thanks for coming. So at Mabel, we're helping uh, developers and engineers build generative AI applications that are ready for production use. And ready for production use is a big step besides throwing a bunch of documents and rag at an LLM and then putting it in production. Uh, you kind of have to have everything that you see here behind us on the board. Right. Uh, how are you measuring? What are your KPIs to actually use AI in production? How are you tracking that? And how is every turn of AI getting better for you? How is mm. the next turn of an AI response better than the last response that it gave in production? And at Maybell, we're helping engineers accomplish that. That's awesome. Uh, I'm kind of also curious because I'm pretty sure at AWS, you're at AI Summit, you've been talking to a lot of enterprise leaders, other community members as well, and you're also seeing AI all around, right? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. I mean, it's, I, I mean every single industry is now looking at generative AI and looking at it in a way of how does it expand my business? Right. And it's not just how do you make a person more efficient at what they do, what kind of new revenue stream do I have with the data that I have sitting in my organization, right? Like, what new things can I make? How can my product become better? Or even in more traditional kind of industries that haven't adopted even things like cloud yet are looking at generative AI as this force multiplier on what they can do next in their industry. Right, right. Um, so I think the proliferation of where this technology is going is absolutely amazing. Uh, and uh, I think we're going to see a lot of great use cases coming out of it. That's interesting. Why do you think uh, folks are now so interested? I, I, you know, obviously, you, you, in terms of, you know, it's uh, as important as uh, it can be today. And even in 2025, you're seeing, we're going to see a lot of implementation that's going to happen. So what's your thought process? Why is it so important right now as compared to what it was maybe five years back? Yeah, so I think years ago, to do anything AI or machine learning, you needed a data science team, right? Right. Um, you had to have someone, maybe they had a PhD in data science and they were they were configuring the models and the models were only be able to be made by a much smaller set of the population. Right. Fast forward to today, you get all of these APIs that literally anybody can use. Mm. It's almost analogous to like what happened when we went from like traditional on-premise development to cloud development. Yep. You know, I remember when I was still engineering at one point in time and cloud came out more than a decade ago and I got an API that literally gave me access to launch anything I needed to make an application. Mm -hmm. And that was an amazing uh, ability that I never had before. You had to go through procurement, you had to go through all these different things just to get the infrastructure you needed to build. Yep. That's become an API. and. And that API now allows, and not just an API, now it's become a text input box, right? right? And so now we've democratized this to the entire world. And now anybody who wants to use AI can, but I think the next level of that is people who want to build AI into their organization. There's a lot of extra steps besides using the text box, hmm. right? And I think that's where we step in uh, is to help kind of that next evolution of how are you gonna build the next gen AI products? Why do you think companies need to actually, uh, you know, have have to build AI in their systems? What's the reason? Uh, we use so much data now. There's yeah. so much data in the world. There's so much data companies are not using. Yeah. And for years, it's been, how do I unlock this data? How do I unlock all this knowledge in my organization that I haven't been able to do before? Yeah. And I don't think it's about necessarily doing more with less people, but it's also about how much more can I do? If I could go out and hire 200 people tomorrow, like what would I do with them? And I think AI kind of allows you to kind of now think, okay, what do I use humans for and what do I use machines for? Yep. And how do I not only augment people, but how do I take data that I have and turn it into something that's been in my brain for years and I haven't been able to accomplish because I just didn't have the team to do it or I didn't have the right, right. personnel. Right. And now you can, it opens up a world of possibilities that didn't exist. And that, those are fantastic insights, Kevin. Uh, I'm kind of also curious to learn a little about, you know, the customer journey when it comes to AI. I talked to a lot of enterprise leaders and in 2023, I remember uh, 
the challenge was obviously implementation but they were uh, 2024 year was supposed to be the year for implementation <laughs> and i'm still hearing the same yep. where uh, and obviously i understand it takes time it, it will you know it's a journey where uh, you definitely need more time and uh, you know there are so many more things so many more innovations that happened in 2024 as well right how do you see a typical customer journey i i know you all have lo a lot of enterprise customers uh, so how does it all work yeah, so I think for us anyway, what we see is we see a lot of people go out and do the science project, right. right? They go out, they use an LLM, they get really, really compelling results back and they're like, okay, this is amazing. Let's take it to the yeah. next step. Yeah. What they run into though, is they realize, hey, if I'm going to use this to actually stake revenue of my company on, mm -hmm. or I'm going to use this in a product that, you know, is critical to the operation of my organization. Now I need something different. Like I need to ask a lot of questions about how it's running, how yep. it's being used, uh, how can I measure and track this thing over time? So yep. I think it's great that everybody can go out and use this technology. And for some use cases, it's great. You can work with like 50% error or something like that. We're concentrating on customers who want to use AI in production. Yep. And how do you measure, run and train that and enable your engineering team and your stakeholders to track it and understand it going forward? That's awesome. And uh, also when we talk about, you know, building it, there are, yeah. we, we can't, uh, you know, not talk about the challenges, right? Yeah. What are those challenges that you've kind of typically seen in enterprises, companies that you all are catering to? And how are you all solving those problems? Well, I think there's a skills gap, right? Mm. Um, while anybody can use AI and get compelling results out of it, again, moving that to a point where you can actually get to production use cases takes a certain skill set. So I think data scientists out there, you're in a great spot, right? I think right. everybody out there can demand a little bit more <laughs> from what they're doing. Exactly. Um, and I do, if you want to start building AI applications yourself, you need the right skill set that's out there. Um, and it's going to be one of those jobs that, you know, is going to be in very, very high demand. And I think you're going to start seeing a lot more people focusing on this industry. But at right now, um, you kind of have a skills gap between what people actually want out of AI and where it's going. Very cool. um, I think some of the other big things though, in a like more of a macro sense is like, hey, how are we gonna power all of this stuff yeah. at the end of the yeah. day? Um, I think that's one of the biggest things that we're talking about is how much data center space, how many GPUs, uh, where's the energy gonna come from and things like that. So I think there's kind of like a macro aspect to it and then also a very practical, you know, how do I implement this in my organization? Yeah, no, I love it. I love those insights. Uh, I'm kind of also curious, since we are just around the corner for 2025, how, what are the trends that you are excited about? Uh, anything that you would like to share? And also what's um, coming for Mabel in 2025? Excited to know a little about that. Yeah, absolutely. So 2025, I think you're going to see people, I, I, you know, I've said this a few times during the conversation, but practical use cases. Yes. And I think this is something coming from AWS reInvent last week to this week is a common theme. How do we actually get uh, practical, applicable use cases to my organization exactly. deployed in production? And you were thinking like, hey, 2024 should have been that year, right? Exactly. It wasn't, right? Um, not at a macro scale that we're talking true, about. I'm not saying true. nobody was able to get it out there, but at a macro level, it wasn't happening. 2025, 2026, that's it, right? You've got to start taking those science projects, getting them production, understanding them, moving them forward. From a Maybell perspective, uh, we want to expand the platform. We want nice. to get into agentic workflows a lot more. Cool. I think this is a yeah. very, very huge Big topic. Uh, area that's yeah. going to go. And obviously, we want to continue to build our confidence framework out so people can measure those KPIs in production as well. Love it. No, I think 100% uh, you just uh, you know mentioned something which is very important in terms of the ROI. The, uh, and that can only happen through the use cases. So in 2025, 2026, that's what we are excited about. Can't wait to obviously... Uh, Keep the conversation going. Can't wait to learn what's next for Mabel as well uh, in the future. Uh, but this was such an, an insightful conversation, Kevin, and uh, such a pleasure chatting with you on The Rabbit Show. We'll definitely uh, keep sharing more content from Mabel as well with our audience and the newer insights that you'll share. Uh, but once again, thanks for visiting The Rabbit Show. Thank you. Such Thank a, you very much. Thank you. Such a pleasure chatting. Thank you, everyone.